welcome back to episode 9 of season 12. It's called Ascension Ascension of Cybermen. We we are on minute 28 to 49 seconds and I'm most interested in the lad story, in the baby that appeared out of nowhere and now survived a gunshot to the heart and a fall. I'm more interested in that than the Cyberman story, but the Cyberman story is interesting as well. Without further ado, let's start ep the episode again on the 28 to 49 seconds, starting now. Marker, Marker, a docking bay. If we could just get in there and get across there, you know. We don't have a reach it. We don't have the power. Well, what about life support? Yeah. <laughs> Channel the remaining energy off those systems. That's what you need. Burst of acceleration. Might work. We could vent the air pressure. They could spin us enough. Okay, so the oxygen will be dead. We're dead anyway. At least let's have a go, eh? Good luck. Right, so we channel every last bit of life support towards propulsion. Everything on. Shut everything down. What is Graham seeing? Into power. We've got to go. We must be mad. Not mad. Hopeful. Okay. Don't panic. Don't take any deep breaths. Because they ain't going to come. We've been shrouded in space before. <laughs> Here we go. Face of hope right there. Place. The same beach. 
No. It's so cold in here. Confused. Ah, see? That is because you're alive and breathing because of us. Are you going to keep going on about that? <laughs> yes, every hour, on the hour. Can you laugh now? You. What about me? You've come a long way, Graham O'Brien. Thanks, Jason. Yes. I made you one of these carriers once. Then you got fried to death. Good times. Cyber control should be just down here. Where? Is this a cyber ship? War carrier. We get this working, it can get us to Kashamas. Maybe you can find your friends. War carrier? Who do you think you want? What was it carrying? of Cybermen that are still alive. Oh, hello. Never touch anything! That's rule number one! What did I say? What did I say? Did this settlement start with you? Yes. 
myself and a handful of others fleeing the cyber camps. So you fought in the war? Yes, for a long time. Then I was captured and held in a human internment camp for processing, sent for upgrade. I was one of the lucky ones who got away. We had heard tell of this place. We didn't really believe it, but we managed to get here. The war hadn't made it this far, so we built shelter, and uh, over time others came. The word spread. So, where's everyone else? There's only me. Great. I helped everyone else through the boundary. And then, because I'm an idiot, I felt like it was my duty to... Wait, in case others came. But it's been a long time. You sacrificed your own life on the chance others were still out there. You make it sound more noble than it is. It is noble. So it's true. The boundary, it's real. Of course it's real. Will you show us? Something. Phones. You and Graham should have them. What's the call, Shadow? Graham, Ravio, head to the control deck. Sadman is boarded. much more than the last one with the round heads I have one of those heads in my bathroom and it's placed in a round window on top of the like really high up hmm. and I have a, a mirror in front of the window ship are the most advanced I've ever seen. Have you seen the speed we're going at? We'll barely take us any time to get to Koshans. Yeah, bringing hundreds of thousands of dormant Cybermen with us. We can't do that. We cannot take Cybermen to the boundary. What are our other options? Surrender this ship? Land on another planet and set the Cybermen loose there? We're going to keep all of you safe. We're going to find the Doctor. And we're going to take them Cybermen down. Yes! Yes, yes. Yes, we are, yes. Totally, very much so. That's some high level self delusion. None of us are giving up, eh? Not now. Glass half full, right? Yeah. What do you think they're doing down there? They reactivate the op system. They've opened up those containers. As I was saying, I have one of these. I have one of the Cybermen heads in the bathroom. So, one of my best friends came over for the first time. What are they doing? What are they doing? They're carrying a Cyberman that makes other Cybermen scream. So where's this boundary? Just she asked us to see. This is where it starts. So she was looking at the mirror and she saw a head of a Cyberman behind her in the mirror. She screamed like bloody murder. A leap to the unknown. It was preferable to the alternative. If he wants to see us, 
Step closer. The response to proximity. A bit further. I won't we'll respond. Oh, 
season that cheap mall makes me mad because Moffat made me mad don't get me wrong but it made me mad and feeling all kind of all kinds of fuzzy things inside cheap mall makes me mad because all his stories are crazy like nothing makes sense we still don't know who the fuck root doctor is we still don't know Jack's thing. So now it, this is connected. Like we knew that last time the Cyberman appeared, it was the this, the master's fault. But you see my face. My face is mad. Let me see if I can see the the trailer. Sean Tim, you're stuck on a ship, stuck to cyber. My work, Doctor. Okay, let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start the trailer. Look upon my work, Doctor, and despair. Oh, fuck. We don't stand a chance here when you're stuck on a ship, stuck to Cybermen. You told you before that everything you knew was a lie. Well, now you get to face the truth. You'll be a pacifist tomorrow. Today, you have to survive. Set course for Gallifrey. Brace yourself. This is going to hurt. What? What is going to hurt? To hurt? Uh, is it turning the doctor into a human? Because that hurts. Um, we still don't know what that laddie was, so that's what I'm saying. Like, Jimmel has lots of great ideas, but then it goes from 80 to, uh, to 88. Like, no, it goes from 8 to 88 real fast because last season we didn't have any kind of story like it was just it was shit <laughs> actually it was shit but it, it didn't have a connection to anything this isn't everything is connected like he went from this to this we need to breathe <laughs> we need to understand and it makes me sad that i don't understand anything right now i you know why I'm ha I'm mad because I'm mad because we we don't trust Chibmo with these kinds of stories. If he proved them, if he has, if in the past he had done great story arcs, I would be glad. I would be really amazed. I would be excited uh, to see how this is going. Right now, I'm scared to see how this is going. To end because I'm I'm afraid it's going to be a Game of Thrones scenario no the ending feels too rushed or there's plot holes or we cannot understand anything anymore so I'm afraid they're going to change canon too much I'm afraid the story is not going to be completely explained I'm afraid that Jack is not going to come back because I want him to come back just a little bit. And I'm afraid it's going to be shit. <laughs> That's it. I really love this show. You guys know that. And it really means a lot to me to have a good ending. 
you know, like I'm always talking about this show to my friends and right now I don't talk about it because I'm I'm not proud of it. I, I'm really not. Like I, I I speak a lot of those episodes that I really like the most, like The Girl in the Fireplace and Visiting to the Doctor and Blink. I, I tell them go watch it, fall in love with it. But right now I don't do that because I'm not in love with it a little bit anymore. Like despite this season, like this season, the season 12, I really liked it so far. But I feel so um, overwhelmed with these stories. And in the past, they haven't, the, the showrunner didn't follow up or didn't deliver enough. So now I'm afraid that we are getting a too much nothing burger, you know? Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. I hope, oh God, I hope that they try to explain everything a little bit and it makes sense and it doesn't blow up all the canon in the Doctor's story. And yeah, I think I will leave you here. I've talked too much already. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.